Hello world and once again welcome to Nana Frimas TV. Today I have one of the finest from Atlanta, from Nigeria as well, the one and only Victor Ola Yeni. Did I pronounce it right? Absolutely right. You're All correct. Right. <laughs> Thank so you. Victor, you are one of one of the um you're my first, actually. You are my first Ghanaian oh, wow. interviewer that I have, I've had on my channel. First Nigerian. First Nigerian. <laughs> okay. Yes, first, first Nigerian. Okay. So, um, okay. Mm -hmm. first of all, thank you so much You're for um, accepting. It's an honor to sit Same in front here. of you it's, it's... today, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, wait, I'm honored to be here. We've been talking about this for a while, and I'm glad that eventually... Um, it almost didn't happen, but it yes. <laughs> eventually it happened. Yes, so eh? I'm grateful that, you know, um, and I thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, it's an, it's a, you know, real, real honor and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, um, I'm glad to be here. All right. So let's go. Let's, let's get it started. <laughs> okay. Right. So how long have you lived outside Nigeria? Okay. I've lived outside Nigeria precisely in the state for seven years, going to 80 years. Um, but my first time outside Nigeria was um, you are nine years now. Okay. Um, it was 2014. This is 2024. It was 10 years ago. Okay. It was my first time. Well, I never lived here. I just used to come and, you know, um, do my music thing, you know, okay. as God leads me to do. I defend, you know, states and churches and then I travel back home. Okay. But 2017, you know, I felt it was time to stay and do more here. And since then I've been here, so it's been... Seven years going to eight years now. Okay, so yeah. are you doing full time ministry, full time music, or is is part time? Yeah, I would say I won't say full time, um, because um, I think it's it's a little um, being in a new environment. It's going to take you a while to get into it full time. You know, back when it was full time while while I was in Nigeria, but since I moved here, you know, I tried to do a few other things on the side. You know, a little bit of coaching. Um, um, traveling, you know, still around music, s sort of, you know, and then of course I venture into a little bit of business on the side, not so much of it, but music has taken the major part of my time Okay. here, you know, over the years. Yeah. How have you been able to balance the music, especially here in mm -hmm. the United States? Right. You know, when, when we come <coughs> here right. into, you might be, you know, when, when you're in, Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, wherever mm -hmm. is different. But when you transition into the United States, it's hard. Is it the same thing with music? Let's say like, for instance, if if someone is, is a doctor in Africa, they right. come here, they have to redo, you know, their program or get into certain things. Is mm -hmm. it with music? Is it the same thing? How how have you been able to balance your music here in the in the United States and then um, in Nigeria. Oh, well, that's that's a good question. Um, here, absolutely, is different, totally different. Um, what I've done over the years, what I moved in here was to, you know, I have a few offer from churches to work as director of music, so that kind of gives me a little bit of um, an opportunity to settle in, kind of, you know. Um, so that helped me to kind of balance a little bit, you know, because you have consistent income coming in from those kind of opportunity when you have a church that hired you as a director of music okay. you know so they're committed to you financially and that helps you to take care of certain things um but it's not the same it's not the same it, it, it's a totally different environment it's a different um expenses <laughs> you know living is expensive in america right. is expensive so yeah. um so it's not the same and then once in a while you get to travel for events Mm -hmm. um so when you do that, that that can also help you know but outside that you know you have to figure out how do you you know get to do a few other things on the side mm -hmm. that can at least give you some level of stability especially financially um as a music person so it's not the same um but practicing here as a music person it's almost the same music it's universal right okay um you wouldn't need to do extra school mm -hmm. if you get opportunity here mm -hmm. to practice unlike the people in medical line right. with the doctor you know even a lawyer or an engineer or an accountant when they come from africa here they need to recertificate do go to right. certification again before they can you know um, practice for music it's not the same you know okay. if you're talented you get in here you're going to get somebody that needs you to either do 
you know, production or do singing or playing instrument, you know, as long as your skill, you can back up your skill, you're going to get something else to do, something to do with okay. it. Okay. So with, <clears throat> with that being said, what, what are you seeking in, in music here in America? What is like your, what would be like the breakthrough for you in music here in, <clears throat> in America? Because if it's, if it's the same thing, mm -hmm. right? What, what, it, what would be your breakthrough here in America? What are you seeking? Uh, yeah, well, wait. Okay, that's a very, very deep question. <laughs> well, because I'm going to say that breakthrough is a very big word. Okay. You know, um, I won't say breakthrough. I will say, let me put it this way. Maybe what would be the the different steps I'm going to take to see that I'm making progress? Okay. You know, over time, will be to see that, okay, I'm able to have um, um, maybe being consistent with, you know, having to travel to do my events with churches, getting invitation consistently could be one of it. And of course, also being able to establish myself to have um, a gathering of people weekly where we can worship together. Okay. For me, that would be the ultimate, that'd be like almost the ultimate. ultimate. Okay. Yeah. Where we can have our own location. It's not a church, you know, our own location where we can do worship. We can do, you know, other things that have to do with music, coaching, training, um, seminars, interviews, um, you know, maybe shoot videos for people, you know, um, just generally help people with knowledge and information, you okay. know, like an information center where people can come in and get knowledge, get empowered with information. Um, that would be for me one of the things I'm looking forward to get into over time here. Okay. Yeah. So nowadays it looks like everyone is doing music. Right. Um, and there are so many reasons for, you know, doing music. If I may ask you, what is your reason behind doing music? Because you, you mentioned that this is to give information to, you know, to worship. So what is your reason um, for, for music? <clears throat> okay um hmm. for me um music for me it's a way of um there are two fold to it for me one because we are we have we are christians and we are believers my first reason for doing music is to be a blessing to the body of christ and you know to bless god my second reason is to empower people around me with information um i believe in doing music that is beyond the four walls of the church, you know, um, music that could, people can listen to and they are, they are lifted, not necessarily church song in call, you know, um, music that could empower the community, that could empower people to know more about themselves, to discover, you know, what they can do, you know, to encourage them in seasons of challenges, in moments when they are down. Mm. You know, I believe in things like that. So for me, those are some of the reasons why I do music. You know, I believe that music should be like a tool to empower people, you know, uh, to become better at life. Um, this thing we call life, nobody really teaches us how to do it. Exactly. You know, so I feel like having music is one of those ways where you can actually um, contribute your own, you know, your own give people you an opportunity to learn more about themselves by coming in contact with your music you know write music that is just not not just for church people okay in as much as people in, in the church are blessed let somebody on the street also hear your music and feel that there's more to my life than what i'm dealing with right now you know the challenges of life um the pain the regrets you know the achievement whatever it is you're dealing with you know, so I believe for me, music is in twofold. One to God and then to the people. Mm. Yeah, that's where I'm going to put it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's thank awesome. You. So how long have you been doing music? Was it, how did it start? Was it through writing? Did you write first? Or did you, were you singing? <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. <laughs> so for me, music started for me as a drummer. That was, that was interesting. Um, oh, well, <laughs> years ago, I was, I think I was like in my, teenage years you know mm -hmm. and then i had this opportunity to serve in a little church where the pastor was getting married it was a very funny story <laughs> and then um he was getting married we were like young people mm -hmm. and um oh wow so so they invited the music director from another state to come teach us how 
to sing a song for the pastor. Okay. And he needed a male voice and nobody could do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let me try. I'm going to do this. Just you know? like that. Just like that. You How know? old were you? I think I was, um, I was that 16 or 17. Okay. You wow. Know? So they put me on stage to do it. Mm-hmm. Taught us the song, the right key, everything was, rehearsal was good. And on the day of the event, mm-hmm. I sang on a different key. You know, it was, it was bad. Like we got on stage, lights on, music on, and I picked, you know, I started singing something totally on a different key. It was, it was wow. You know, it was crazy. Wow. You know, so, um, and then what makes it so crazy was the guy who came to taught us this song, who came to, you know, you know, um, took us through the time of learning the song. He stood up from the congregation, mm. walked down to the stage and took the mic for me. Why? Right in front of everybody. Because I was doing something else. I was, I sang on a different key. He took the mic for me and sang the song all through. You know, and just I was just there. I looked so crazy. I didn't know what I don't know how to describe it. So that day, I told myself that I'm going to I'm going to sit down and learn music. And for me, that was the first motivation. I've always had that. Before then, I was a drummer. I I played the drum. So that was my first attempt at singing. I was like 16, 17. And after that day, I went back home and I started listening to music. Wow. A month after, I started doing songs at church. You know, a year before, a year after that, I became the director of the choir, you know, and that was how for me, music started going. And I started taking song after song, after song, after song, you know, it got to a point that that church was like, no, this guy is up to something. Like I took it personal, like this, I must learn this. <laughs> I was going to say, how, <laughs> at, at, at that, as a teenager, yeah. in, you know, in, in the crowd yeah. and for him to come and take the mic from you right that, that must be disturbing for you what how did you feel about it i felt like the world should come to an end at that point and or everybody should disappear like it was crazy you know so it was it was bad it was pretty bad it was i mean it, I mean, it's an experience that for me you know people in this part of the world they would call it they've been traumatized <laughs> you know for me, i'm like oh man surely because it was, it was that's crazy. one of them yeah you know He's an, I mean, it's a mature man. He's an adult. We're just young children. Right. You know, he came to the mic for me and I was there. My pastor was just making to me, just, just chill. You know, now he was getting, he wasn't getting married. It was this, I mean, it was, it was, it was bad, you know, but I told myself like, this is good. You know, God must have a reason for this. You know, people say there's always a reason for something. So I told myself, okay, I'm going to just sit down and start to learn how to do singing and stuff. You know, proud to that time, I've just played the drums. And that was how I started to sing. And a year after that, I became the music director of the church. Of, of that same church? Of that church. same church, was, yeah. was that man still there? He had, he had left. Okay. You know, he was just a guest. He came to teach oh, us. Oh, he was year. a guest. He was a guest. You know, he had left, you know. Mm-hmm. I became the music director of the church for like four or five years till I left that state. You know, so it was it was a good motivation for me, you know. So I feel like sometimes when things happen to us, you know, we should just learn from it and, and pick it up. So that for me was like one of the motivation mm-hmm. for me to start doing music. And after that, I, you know, I really like went really into music and people, you know, keep saying, oh, we you know when you sing, there's just something about the presence of God or, you know, when you sing. And, you know, I said, kept saying, wait, well, that has to be God. I didn't have the talent like that. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many people can do much better than me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've just decided to be consistent with it, sing over time. And from there on, it's been from one level of, you know, impact to another, going to a bigger church, going to a bigger place, going to a bigger location. And, you know, I still get invitation, you know, pretty much. Um, so you would say that at that age, that's when you had discovered yourself yeah. in, in, in music and other dimensions of music outside the... Um, yeah, the, absolutely. The, it was the, the, I was that, I was the that age. Yeah, it was that age I discovered that, you know, and since then it's been, you know... But it's an experience I can't forget. So we asked me right now, it looks very so fresh in my mind how it happened. You know? Right. Yeah. Wow. yeah that, that was how it started for me. Wow. Yeah. I see. Mm-hmm. So um, with that being said, of course, it was. I was going to ask what an embarrassing moment that you've ever had. But since then, have you ever had any embarrassing, any embarrassing moment? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, really. Mm. No, except... No, no, I won't. I've, not on stage. Not on yeah. stage, okay. yeah. Not on stage. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've had meetings where you travel for events and people plan oh you know we want to have you come sing for you go with your whole team and you get it you almost like get you know almost stranded because they weren't going to pay you they weren't going to give you any money to go back mm. you know i've had several of that over time 
you how, know. how long or how many years of experience did you have the non-payment and you know doing f- free few free <laughs> <laughs> i've done a lot of free events i still do a lot of free events okay. you know um but there was a time where it was so like very consistent and people do we want to pay for your service or pay for what you do mm. but i've learned to just you know have a heart of service that okay i'm just doing this you travel miles and miles to another state especially for students in schools back then and you know you do this event for them and they tell you oh sorry we are so sorry we didn't um know that something would happen we'll send our money that that, that. You, you came with your team like what am i gonna give have my team with me you know so i've been through all of that you know a few churches did it to us we we, we worked at a church somewhere in nigeria at the time big church as in you know late miles monroe was the one that preached at oh. that event for like a youth conference we were like, well in Where my was team that? in nigeria, in nigeria. Call, it's called worry in nigeria okay. one of mm-hmm. the states in worry in nigeria delta state in nigeria you know i don't want to mention names mm-hmm. it's a big church one of the top three churches there you know and we finished and they, they were giving me stories like oh we are so sorry sir um so we plan but mama did not sign the check on time that, 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 that we're going to send you your money i'm like excuse me I have a whole team with me. We came in two vehicles or three vehicles. Wow. You know, how do we go back, you know? Um, it's always, we've had, you know, we have to figure out a way to go back. I'm not even sure we got all that money back. Eventually, I had to pay my guys from my pocket and raise the money to pay them. So we had all this kind of event. I mean, um, series of events like that in time past, you know? And so, yeah, it's also taught me lessons that when you are going anywhere, be very cautious what you do, how you mm-hmm. relate with people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's also... When some people say, "Oh, I have a fee, or I charge a fee, I don't charge a fee, I don't, I don't get into that with you people," involve you in I that. let yeah. people decide what they feel okay. is best for them. You know, when it comes to these issues, but we've been, we've dealt with all those kind of things in the past. Are you being paid now? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say yes. You know, um, some people still have a struggle paying you as an artist or as a singer, especially when it's a religious organization, a church, in quote. Um, but we figure out ways to, to handle it, you know, man must eat. Oh yeah, absolutely. You have to, you know, you have bills to pay, you have team to pay, you know, if it's just use a different thing, but when you have a whole team of people that you are working with, um, um, there are, there are things that are way you explain to them that, oh, okay. You know, some churches will have a little to give you, you know, that could just pay your team and that's it. You won't have anything extra. You know, um, I've been to a lot of events, you know, I, I think I still have an event like a week or a week ago or something. I mean, when they give you something, by the time you give your team, nothing is nothing is left behind, you know. So um, that's that's the experience so far. Um, it get better in some instances, okay. you know. Um, and because for me, music is a calling. It's not just like it's just the a job. gift. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not just a job or whatever. So... I still find joy in doing what I do sometimes, even when it doesn't look like you're getting well paid for what you do, you know. Um, so you still go out to do it because there are places where you've been to and people go out, come out of their way to just bless you without even you asking. You know, right. yeah, you know, I've experienced, right. you know, a um, lot of that. And I still do experience a lot of that. I've had people that send me money at a time, just send me money weekly without even... These are churches I've been to. You know, just like that. Okay, I need to send you money weekly. That's you amazing. Know. Yeah. So I've That's had those blessing. kind of yeah. 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 I've had those kind of experiences. You know, um. Okay. So it's 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 been a blessing. It's been a blessing. So yeah. let me ask, mm-hmm. at that boy at sixteen years old. Okay. And now, if mm-hmm. you have to redo music. Okay. Would you? What would you have done? Would you have done anything differently, or would you have done it the same way that you took it at that? age of 16 mm-hmm. when the microphone was taken away <laughs> from you <laughs> oh wow um well that's a very very um that's a very great question i would i do anything differently maybe no you know because for every experience of life you you you've been through there's always a reason i think that's for me gave me an opportunity to look at life differently and to see turn my you know challenges into an opportunity mm. you know um I, so I don't think I wouldn't change anything, but maybe if I had to go back now, um, with the with the benefit of hindsight, maybe I will pay more attention, you know, to my environment and to think what I what I've learned 
across that period of time, you know, along that line, you know, how I met those people, what I did at that time, you know, because what makes us to be who we are right now are, you know, little, little experience of our lives from the past to this point. It mm. will make us to be who we are right now. Right. You know, I probably will pay more attention to my, you know, those little, little steps I've taken. You know, if I had to go back now, right, to be where I am now. Every little step. Every little step, yeah, that leads counts. to yeah. count, yeah. So yeah. that would probably help me to be much better. That I think that's the only thing. But for the experiences, I'm happy for it. I'm glad for it now. It wasn't it wasn't a good experience back then. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah definitely. Part of life. Part of life. <laughs> so, um, have you had any surreal or um, any unbelievable experiences um, through through music? Um, hmm. Okay, could you could you explain a little bit what you mean by like you ex- like like a, a, a wow moment? Maybe let's give like an example. Um, you're not looking forward to meet this person mm-hmm. to do music with, but maybe the person is like a childhood inspiration or a childhood hero. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know that you had wish. Have you had those moments, those moments. In, in music? Hmm. Um. Let me, let me say I've had a few. I've had a few. Years ago, um, um, you know, I had an opportunity to sit with a few people that I never thought I would meet so quick quickly mm. over time. Um, um, I, mean, I wasn't here back then. I was back in Nigeria. Uh, this was more than 15 years ago. You know, um, if you don't know, an American worship leader called Donnie McClurkin, Oh, yeah. You know, at the yeah. time it was like you know, it was like the top top. He still is. He still is, you know. Yeah. So yeah. When so, you mentioned Danny, but I know. Was, oh, wow. Talking, yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he came to Nigeria, and then he he wanted to have a meeting with worship leaders, and my name came up. Oh. You know, so we're like eleven or twelve of us. If you were like fifteen at the most, mm-hmm. sat with him in a small room, and How he was just sharing. How old were you then? I think I was like I was my twenties. Oh. <laughs> I was my like twenty three or twenty three or twenty four. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. um, because I became the worship leader of my church at a very young age. There was a different church, not the one I was talking about mm-hmm. that, had, that, that happened. And this was a big church where at that time we were doing like four, four services. And I was the youngest among everybody. You know, I was the worship leader. So, and then my name came up and, you know, I went and we had a meeting. And after that, you know, and then they said they want to have Sunday best, um, Sunday best, um, judges to sit down on the table to hear people come for audition mm. you know sunday best was started here with Kev franklin and a couple of other people mm-hmm. you know and my name came up again you know so i sat on the table with you know Kev franklin all these big names and all that and so people were singing and and i'm like how did i even get here right. <laughs> you know back then you know and i was then i didn't even have much experience with music you know i mean for me it was like a very good experience like so really experience i never thought you know, where I was then, you know, that I would meet this kind of people so, you know, quickly like that. That was one experience I had. Another one was my trip to Namibia. Mm. Um, my trip to Namibia, after ministering at the, this conference, you know, somebody came up and said, they want my son to be translated to a couple of languages on radio stations, and, you know, and they took it and it and happened before I left. You know, for me, that was another, but like, so real experience. Um, I mean, so I've had a few of that, which, well, I, I knew it was God's. It wasn't like I had no how to do anything better. Right. You know, um, yeah, this, this, this was some of it that I've had in the past. Yeah. So how many songs or um, music have you written? So have you written any songs for any artists that are out there? A um, couple? Yeah, I've, I've done a couple of songs. I've written... Um, I think I've lost count of my songs at the moment. I know I've oh, done wow. four albums. Mm. Um, I've done four albums, um, four CDs in quote. Uh, but right now, I've t- in the last two years, I've released like three singles. Um, this year, I've released, I think, two. Oh, wow. And then right now, we're working on three, we're doing three, live recording this coming weekend mm-hmm. you know um i mean my friend right, right there can, you know this like this weekend this, this saturday like, what, this saturday this like, saturday yeah and this saturday is the what the 20 the third year the 30th, 30th yes yeah. that's yeah the 24th, yeah we're yeah. having a live recording here the of, 30th of november okay yeah you know 
some of my new songs are you know we're recording them live um here in georgia so we plan to have them well documented you know um and then um that'll be for next year so that like, from january we want to have the first one out by january and then we want to just roll them out for like the first three quarters so, like every quarter we want to have a song out mm-hmm. for next year and then um maybe we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there if you have any advice for mm-hmm. any musician what would it be hmm. i will say i would say learn as much as you can from people around you and be very humble you know life happens very quickly and um and don't dwell so much on on your past <laughs> you know i would say yeah don't dwell so much on your past um what you've seen around what you what you've seen people do it that's all that you know what is behind the curtain you don't know what they're dealing with you don't know you know learn not to judge people be very humble um respect your leaders you know and um, be kind to your family because when all is said and done the closest people to you are going to be your family that's true you know so that's what i'm going to say and you know value your family a whole lot um don't look down on nobody mm. you know um life happens very quickly mm. uh, life is very fickle life is short um you know just learn as much as you can and um move with a lot of wisdom and stay humble no matter how big you become you know i'll tell anybody stay very humble <laughs> yeah that's my advice yeah do you have any plans in going to nigeria either to stay or um you know to be because i know that you do music mm-hmm, so would mm-hmm. you go to nigeria do music and come back or do you do you have any plans yeah i plan to be in nigeria hopefully next year okay um probably to just do it like it's all i've okay. not done that in a long time okay um you know gratefully a lot of my friends were like pastors and they now have like big big churches yeah. <laughs> you know so <laughs> and a lot of them we haven't seen for years okay um so i would love to go to nigeria just okay. do you know a couple of tour a couple of places and and come back okay you would know. you choose ghana well definitely i'll go i'll be in ghana i should okay. be in ghana yeah i've had people asking to come to ghana it's just that it hasn't happened yet okay yeah that definitely ghana is at the top of my, my, my list okay yeah so <laughs> <laughs> Ghana, Ghana Jollof or Nigerian Jollof? <laughs> oh, man, this thing there. Eh? This is Ghana Jollof, man. Eh? Hey, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> of course, Nigerian Jollof. Anytime. <laughs> that one is... you got to sit here and say Nigerian Jollof. <laughs> Nigerian Jollof. It's, ah. it's, yeah, it's Nigerian okay. Jollof. We'll leave it to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> when I get to Ghana, we can go We can go into that. Yeah, when we get to Ghana, we'll, we'll go into that. We'll see how it works out. <laughs> Victor, thank you for honoring this invitation it's it means honor. a lot to me thank and i appreciate it thank you so thank much you once um, again thank you so much it's been an honor to be here and then um you know i'm glad we get to do this and you know great work you're doing and i you know i pray that it gets better and bigger you know thank and you. we'll always be here anytime you need us sure. thank, thank you so you. much yeah so um where can we find your songs and then what are your social media handles that okay you yeah um, um instagram I mean, I am Victor Lyony on Instagram. You know, I am Victor Lyony on Instagram. YouTube, Victor Lyony. Facebook, Victor Lyony. Pretty simple. You know, if you, you know, Google it, Victor Lyony. You know, and then um, on Spotify, we have a couple of thousands of followers, you know, on Spotify. Okay. It would be nice to, you know, join our playlist on, on Spotify. We what can are some of the albums that we can, we can type in on Live Spotify? and Worship. Okay. Um, and one, Life and Worship 2 online. And in recent times, I've did a song titled "God Alone," Victor Lyony. Uh, I've done "Only You," Victor Lyony. I've done "Done It Again," Victor Lyony. Um, and we're about to release like four other, you know, singles, which nice. I'll keep for now until it's nice. out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Once again, well, thank you for sticking with me on Anaphromes TV. If you haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do. Hit that button. I want to use this opportunity also to thank Eden Studio for allowing us um, this opportunity and then for granting us this space. Eden Studio is located at um, 1701 Cruise Road, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Um, You can do music production, you can do podcast, you can do concert, around the table concerts. 
um, here at Eden Studio. So once again, Eden Studio is located in Georgia. If you're in the Atlanta area, come to 1701 Cruise Road, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Toodles.